A big thanks to Bernhard for sponsoring this episode. I get it, you're scared. They're coming tomorrow. A group of 50 people, they're invading your house and they all want to eat. They want to eat loads and loads of barbecue. And they know you can cook. They know you are the best at barbecue, so they have high expectations. If they're expecting the world and so many people are coming, how are you gonna solve this? It's not gonna be easy, is it? I'm not gonna tell you any lies, it's not gonna be easy. Cooking for that many people is always a challenge, but there is a way and it's right here in my barbecue. So I went to visit my favorite butcher. And he already did most of the prepping. He selected a beautiful beef belly for me and he specially cut out a perfect pork belly to fit that beef belly. Now we had a little bit of debate which was the best way to roll it up, but in the end he helped me to figure it out. And here it is. The project arrived in the studio and I got these two crates with all that beautiful meat. Let's get this out of the package and assemble the beautiful roast. You might already know this as the pork belly. It's one of my favorite cuts. You can use it for anything. It is fantastic as a beautiful crispy roast, you know, with the crackling pork skin. It is perfect for bacon and we do all kinds of stuff with it. It's just freaking delicious. And this is practically the same piece, but from a cow. And it's just as amazing. Remember the video that we did on how to save money on barbecue where I found this new cut? This is that cut, the belly. It's gonna save you money when you barbecue and it's gonna taste freaking delicious. So you need to ask your butcher for a piece of beef belly. But what if we marry these two together? Look at that. Slap it on and first we need to get some flavor on. You think you're gonna feed them all? I think uh, it's gonna be a challenge to eat all of this for those people. And if you have loads of meat, you need loads of garlic. So I'm adding 20 cloves of garlic. Then I'm going to take the meat off the bell pepper, add that to the blender, three red onions, two red chili peppers, now grind it up. And when that turns into a smooth puree, I'm adding two bunches of thyme and a bunch of parsley. And there it is, a beautiful sauce to go with our delicious roast. Now it doesn't look like much right now, but if you could just smell it. Like, oh, all the fresh herbs just tingling my nose. And remember, I, I didn't add any salt yet. The garlic, the onions, just poof, it's right there. And before I'm going to add all that flavor onto the beef, uh, first I'm gonna season it with salt. Now with a lot of meat comes a lot of salt. This is around three tablespoons worth of salt and I'm using just regular table salt. Of course, I'm gonna do the same with the pork belly. All of that fragrance and mostly the garlic and the onion, but the bell peppers and the fresh spices as well. Everything comes together. Now I wanna rub this in as much as possible. You can already see it looked like a bit much but it's kind of disappearing. That's how huge this amount of meat is. Everything is covered in that beautiful, delicious spice mix. That's gonna guarantee that this roast is gonna have a lot of flavor. Okay, can you hold it up one more time? Nope, no, I refuse. <laughs> That's gonna be very, very messy. All right, let's close this up, fold it up, and then... And then I'm gonna try and roll this up and tie it up. So basically, What's going to happen is that this has got to go over this. I want to roll it up like a real roll. Roll, roll, roll. And to get it together, I kind of miss the hands, so I'm going to ask Michelle to help me out. All right, we're tying this up, rolling it together. Of course, you want to use some butcher twines because they're a little bit more heavy duty than regular twine. It just makes everything so much more easy. Look at how monstrous this looks. It is freaking insane. And it's so super heavy. Yeah, boy! Oh. <laughs> this definitely is gonna be a feast, but it's not done yet. We got the inside covered, but I want the outside to pop as well. So I'm gonna take some mustard and that's gonna be the binder for my rub that I'm gonna put on the outside and with which I'm gonna make a crust. I have a pre-made batch of Pitmaster X Classic Barbecue Rub here that I'm gonna sprinkle on. If you're looking for this recipe, it's on pitmasterx.com. 
It's not something that you can buy in a store, but it's something that you can make at home. This is best made at home because you're just gonna save a lot of money on store-bought rubs. And this is, well, just as good or maybe even better. This thing is done ready. I did all about I can do to this rose to make it as tasty, as beautiful as I can. So now it's time to fire up the Bernhard smoker. First, I'm gonna add some pellets and set it to roasting temperatures of 150 degrees Celsius. Let's open it up, put the roast oh, in. Oh, oh, oh. This is the first time that there's something that, well, is close to not fitting to the Bernhard smoker. Yeah, it doesn't fit in the trunk. Just close the trunk. Slap it a few times. <laughs> now I want my core temperature to be at 65 degrees Celsius, which is when the pork belly is done. So I'm gonna stick that in a little bit higher than that. I'm gonna close the lid. I'm going to let time do its magic. It's been eight hours of smoking and I just checked the temperature and we have a core temperature of 65 degrees Celsius. And look at this thing. Well, that looks better than expected. Just imagine spending around 10 euros and $10 the kilogram on a roast like this. That's absolutely nothing. That's super, super cheap. And look at the size of this thing. Still can't get over it. Let, let's get this off. It is so juicy. Just look at the juices. Look, <laughs> like a real waterfall. Yeah. What a monster. An absolute freaking monster. You guys think that's gonna feed 20 people? I definitely hope so. First, me and the dog. Maybe she, maybe you can get Freddy to try a little piece. This thing has an absolute beautiful crust on it. Just like you get on a brisket. Crunchy, crispy, looking real fantastic. And you already saw the juices running out. This thing is a flavor bomb. It's so juicy, so tasty. Insane. First now, before I cut into this, I'm gonna let it rest at least 20 minutes. Then we're gonna slice into it. Of course, we gotta do the check to see if everything worked out the way we wanted it to. So I'm gonna slice into it, and we're going to take a look on the inside. Look at how juicy that looks. Of course, we're gonna have a lot of fat in the beginning, and once we hit that middle, it's gonna be less fat. You can see it's already reducing but it's super juicy. We got that nice red edge from the smoke ring and by cutting it real thin, we're turning it basically into a swarma. These are the slices. This is what is going to steal the show. What a beautiful end result. Juicy beef, super tender, and I bet you all these people are gonna enjoy it like they never have eaten ever before. And now you see it's possible and you can do it too. 